6-2, definite integrals. Imagine having a function, and this line, the curve, is the graph of the function, and we want to find the area under the curve. As it turns out, it doesn't matter if you have left endpoints or midpoints or somewhere in between. Uh, if we take this to infinity, if we end up having an infinite amount of rectangles, then we're going to be able to find the exact area under the curve if we know what the function is. We have a definition. The definite integral as a limit of Riemann sums. Let f be a function defined on a closed interval a to b for any partition, partition p of a, b. Let the numbers c sub k be chosen arbitrarily in the subinterval. Uh, if there exists a number i such that, and what this is all talking about is you have these uh, change in x, which would be your width, and you have this uh, f of c's, which is the height of the rectangles, and really it's the area. So right here, this is the height, and the change in x is the base. And as long as the limit as the biggest rectangle or the biggest partition is tending to zero, so as long as the biggest one is getting smaller as you make more and more and more rectangles, as long as that's happening, there should be an integral value. No matter how p and c's are chosen, then f is integrable on a to b, and i is the definite integral of f over a b. Theorem 1, the existence of definite integrals. All continuous functions are integrable. All continuous functions have, an integration, have, have a value for the integral. That is, if a function f is continuous on an interval a to b, then its definite integral over a b exists. The definite integral of a continuous function on a b. Let f be continuous on a b and let a b parti be partitioned into n subintervals. In other words, we have a certain amount of rectangles of equal length. So we're talking about the bases being all exactly the same. So imagine that uh, you're going from A to B. Let's say you're going from 0 to 4. Uh, the, the change in X, the, the length of the base, will be 4 minus 0 over the number of rectangles. So let's say we cut it into 4 rectangles. That would be 4 over 4, so the change in X in this case would be 1. But it doesn't even have to be nice. It could be uh, 4 divided by 3. The limit as n approaches infinity, as we get more and more and more rectangles, uh, we will try to get an infinite amount of those. Uh, you find the area, that's the height times the base, by summing up all of the areas, where each c sub k is chosen arbitrarily in the kth subinterval. Now Leibniz had some different notation for all of this summation. He said, well, why don't we just make it an elongated s? This is really an s elongated. And a to b is the interval on which we're finding the integral. And then we have f of x times d of x. Now this is change of x, and this is really the height of each of the rectangles. Let's look at the parts of the integral. First of all, we have the integral sign. We have the limits of integration. We have the lower limit and the upper limit. So if you're integrating from negative 2 to 5, the lower usually goes on the bottom, and the upper goes on the top. Then we integrating f of x. This is called the integrand. And then dx indicates which variable we are integrating on. This whole thing is said integral of f from a to b. When you find the value of the integral, you have evaluated the integral. So once you find a value, of course, you've evaluated the integral and it goes away. So negative 2 to 5 of, let's say, 2x plus 3 dx ends up being some value. Using the notation, the interval negative 1 to 3 is partitioned into n subintervals of equal length. Let m sub k denote the midpoint of the k subinterval. Express the limit. So when we add up all of the rectangles under this curve, really what we're doing is we're finding the integral from negative 1 to 3 of 3x squared minus 2x plus 5. So here's your 3x squared, your 2x, and your plus 5. And instead of writing delta x, we write dx. Evaluate the integral from negative 2 to 2 of the square root of 4 minus x squared dx. Well, this is the equation of a circle, and it's the top half of the circle. Because really, this came from y is equal to the square root of 4 minus x squared. Well, if we square both sides, we get y squared equals 4 minus x squared. And then if we add x over, x squared over, 
we get x squared plus y squared equals 4. That's a circle with a radius of 2. Now if you go backwards with that, if you were to go backwards and square root, you get plus or minus. So really you get plus or minus when you solve for y here, 4 minus x squared. The plus is the top half of the circle, and the minus represents the bottom half. So really we're finding the area under the curve of the top half of a circle with radius of 2. So all of this says find the area under this curve. And we'll find it above the x-axis and below the circle. Well, we know what the area of a circle is. It's pi r squared. So in this case, the area equals uh, pi times 2 squared. The radius is 2, so the answer is 4 pi. Area equals negative a to b f of x dx when f of x is less than or equal to 0. All that is saying is when the area is above the x-axis, the area is considered positive. And when we have area below the x-axis, it's considered negative. So we have some positive, negative, and then positive area for this function from A to B. Constant functions. Integrals of constant functions are easy to evaluate. Over a closed interval, they are simply the constant times the length of the interval. The integral of a constant. If f of x equals c, a constant, where c is a constant, on the interval a to b, then the integral is equal to, you just take c times the b minus a. So if we had the integral from 2 to 4 of 7 dx, let's say, the integral of a constant, that's equal to 7 times 4 minus 2. So we ha end up having two 7s, which is 14. Revisiting the train problem. A train moving along a track at a steady 75 miles per hour from 7 to 9 a.m. Uh, express its total distance traveled as an integral and then evaluate using what we just did. Now if we're going to find the area under the curve, the curve is actually a line, so we're integrating from 7 to 9 and we're integrating the constant function y equals 75. And we're integrating with respect to x even though there's no x in uh, the equation. We could write 75x to the 0, but that would just be 1. Now, so there's the integral. That's part of what they wanted. And then we're supposed to evaluate. Well, that's equal to 75, 5, times 9 minus 7. So there's two 75s, or 75 times 2. That's 150. So 150 miles. Example 4, use n-i-n-t. Evaluate the following integrals numerically. A, integral from negative 1 to 2 of x sine of x dx. Well, we don't know how to do that yet, but we can certainly find a value. We can go to math, and then go down to f n i n t, press enter. Now for this calculator, it's x sine of x. The next argument is the variable we're integrating on, which is x. And then we're going from negative 1 to 2. And the solution is... 2.043, 2.043. In letter B, we do the exact same thing. We can go to math. This is actually number 9. Uh, we need the function first, so 4 divided by 1 plus x squared. We are integrating over x, and we're going from 0 to 1. Press enter, and we have 3.142, 3.142 and you probably recognize that as pi. For the last one, letter C, we go to number 9 again, F-N-I-N-T. Uh, we put the equation in, which is e to the negative x squared. The next argument is x, and we're going from 0 to 5. Enter. And we get 0.886. Let's look at N-I-N-T for one of the newer calculators because the format is a little bit different. But we go to the same place. We go to math. Let's turn it on. Let's go to math. And number 9 is FNINT. And you notice it looks a little different. It's actually uh, designed more to look like the symbols that calculus uses. So in the bottom, we're going to put 2. In the top, we'll put 3, just like the problem. And we'll slide over, press over to the right, and we'll put X sine of x. We will close the parentheses. And then over here, 
we put what the variable is and we are integrating on X and we press enter and we get an answer of 1.370 in exercises 1 through 6 each C sub K is chosen from the kth sub interval of a regular partition of the indicated interval into n sub intervals of length delta x. Express the limit as a definite integral. Well that's great that they gave us all that but really to actually do the problem we just write the integral sign the elongated s from negative 7 to 5 this is going to be x squared minus 3x dx that's the answer. Number 4 is integral from 2 to 3 we're on the interval from 2 to 3 of 1 over 1 minus x dx. In exercises 7 through 12, evaluate the integral. This is a constant. So the answer is negative 20 times 7 minus 3. Negative 20 times 4, negative 80. On number 10, we have a constant, which is pi over 2. So we have pi over 2 times negative 1 minus negative 4, which is pi over 2 times 3, which is 3 pi over 2.